Let's talk tenor. In the last video I did on saxophones in the orchestra, we talked about the baritone sax. Uh, perhaps of the, the common saxophones, the soprano, alto, tenor, and baritone, the least seen member of the family in the orchestra. Today, let's take a look at the tenor saxophone. The tenor saxophone is far, far more common. Uh, what we find is the tenor saxophone will often be used by composers as a, really, as the name suggests, a tenor voice within the woodwind ensemble. Uh, the tenor role is a little bit ambiguous in the woodwinds. Typically, we give that role to the first bassoon, and the second bassoon takes the bass role. And then if we're using um, a standard woodwinds in twos, two flutes, two oboes, two clarinets, two bassoons, We've got flutes, oboes, and clarinets all playing soprano and alto roles, and bassoons left over to take over both the tenor and the bass. So the tenor saxophone can be brought in to uh, help out with the tenor role, especially if the bass clarinet is being brought in to help with the bass. So the bass clarinet goes with second bassoon, tenor sax goes with first bassoon. And this is a combination we see quite often. The other big role is, of course, jazz. If you are playing a piece inspired by jazz, well, you're going to have some tenor sax. And, well, I'll tell you what, I'll play a few excerpts from uh, perhaps the uh, most famous uh, jazz work for orchestra. <gasps> That is, of course, Rhapsody in Blue by George Gershwin. And that is from the orchestral version orchestrated by Freddie Groffet. There is another version of that for jazz band that uses a different saxophone setup. It was originally designed for three musicians to cover all the woodwind parts. Today, that is almost never done, even when that performance, uh, that version is performed, I should say, uh, because those were absolute master doublers and they were covering things that most doublers won't attempt. So that gives you a good idea of the low range and how that's scored. Uh, but let's go to something a little bit more in the high range. Now, again, uh, these excerpts are coming out of the orchestral saxophonists by Ronkin and Frascotti. And there are two volumes of this. I'm just using volume one. These are some of the more famous excerpts. And, well, let's go to somebody who uh, knew Gershwin a little bit and uh, to a little bit of Maurice Ravel. Ravel, uh, in his bolero, called for two saxophone players playing on three different instruments, but we'll talk about that one in a couple more videos about the, the predicaments there. But let's just talk today about the sax, the tenor saxophone part. The tenor sax has this lovely um, counter melody. It's the second melody of the piece. Uh, Belair only has two melodies, uh, one in C and then this one that starts on the B flat and then kind of just meanders around a little bit. And what I'll do is I'll play this, and this really focuses a lot more on the tenor's singing upper register. Um, it's a, very akin to the high range of the bassoon. <sighs> Thank you. 
So there you can almost see the, the whole standard range of the tenor saxophone from the high E flat down to the lows D. A nice big ranging solo. And for something like that uh, solo voice, the tenor saxophone works quite well. In fact, this is the only time Ravel ever scored for the tenor saxophone. Of course, if we're going to talk tenor saxophone in the orchestra, there is one composer above all others that really needs to have their music looked at, and that is Sergei Prokofiev. Prokofiev wrote three major works that call for the tenor saxophone. The Alexander Nevsky uh, works, both the cantata and the film music, the Malay Romeo and Juliet, and the piece I'm going to play excerpts from is Lieutenant Kijé. And in this, the tenor saxophone really takes a big starring role. It's almost as if it's Lieutenant Kijé himself, except Lieutenant Kijé didn't exist, but we'll overlook that. So the uh, the first little bit is I'm gonna I'm gonna play is um, just a really lovely duet with the flute, tenor sax and flute. It's actually really a pretty haunting sound, um, and it just so happens that I guess two days ago I happened to listen to this on the radio. It's like, oh man, I forgot how nice the tenor saxophone moments in this piece are. So movement one, Lieutenant Kijé. Very light, very sustained. Now, movement two is the romance. There are two versions of the romance. Uh, one uses a singer, a baritone voice, uh, but that's not usually done. Typically, we will hear it uh, with the instrumental only. And here we've got a big tenor sax solo. And I'll play a couple of the solos from the second movement. <laughs> to the the troika the fifth uh, fourth movement I should say and here we have the most rhythmically active solo for the tenor saxophone <laughs> ideas of how um, Prokofiev is using it. and most of those are uh, with the bassoons and the combination in the orchestral literature of tenor sax and bassoon is really really quite nice it gives you this rich reedy sound finally I will look at perhaps the uh, most difficult uh, tenor saxophone part in the literature, and that is from the Bon Williams Sixth Symphony, and I undoubtedly will butcher some of this. It is, it's like a, a difficult etude out of a book. Um, if saxophone players were required to have orchestral auditions, this would be high up on the list of technical pieces that they would be required to play. In this work, Von Williams asked the bass clarinet player to double the tenor saxophone. However, in practice, this never happens because the saxophone part really requires uh, a near virtuoso player. And it's found usually better to hire a separate saxophone player and just have two people covering the same part, even though the two instruments never play at the same time. 
this is something that is going to be a little bit more common when we get to the alto saxophone in the next video. So I'm going to attempt to play just a little bit from the scherzo of the Vaughn Williams 6. <laughs> And it keeps going on like that for several pages. Not rhythmically clean under my fingers. But tenor saxophone, much more common than our baritone saxophone in orchestral writing. We've got lots of examples from really major composers. Vaughn Williams, Prokofiev, Boler, uh, Bolero, Ravel, um, Gershwin, of course. And there are, of course, others. But typically... We'll use it to fill out the tenor roll in the woodwind section, or really as a jazzy voice. So, next video we will get to the biggest uh, saxophone in orchestral literature, that is, of course, the alto.